Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at details of how the eye works and how the different parts work together to help us see things. So the first thing is that the eye is a sensory receptor and what it does is it detects light. And by that we mean it detects both the color of light and the brightness of light. Now here we have a diagram of an eyeball. We can't see the insides here. You can see the muscles that help to move the eye around. But a diagram you'll be more familiar with is one that looks a bit like this. You should be able to label the parts of the eye based on a diagram that might look like that. So pause here if you want to give this a try before we go through it. If not, let's go through it together. The first thing is this part here, which is called the lens. Then we have the part at the front called the cornea. And then we have the pupil that lets light in at the front. We then have the iris. And if we take a look at a photograph of the eye, these are the parts that you can usually see. The pupil is the small dark spot in the middle, and the iris is the part of the eye that gives it its color. The next part we want to look at is this layer at the back of the eye. This is called the retina. And if I was just to highlight that, it's just this inside layer. There's two or three layers that we can see, but it's the one on the very inside there. That's the retina. We're going to look at more details about the uh, retina in a moment. We then have this uh, label on the bottom right hand side. This is the optic nerve, which leads away from the brain. And then we have these little muscles that are each side of the lens. And these are called ciliary muscles. We also have a part here uh, on each side of the lens. These are suspensory ligaments and these join the ciliary muscles to the lens. So these are suspensory ligaments that join ciliary muscles to the lens. That's another part you may have seen if you are doing some homework or revision on the eye. The lens, remember, this refracts light rays and it focuses them on the retina. On the retina. This is the retina that we labeled previously. That's the job of the lens. The cornea now this is transparent, this is the front part of the eye and it's transparent and it lets light through, it lets light rays through and we're going to look at the details of how those two work together shortly. The iris can change the size of the pupil and the pupil has the job of allowing light to enter the eye. So the pupil allows light to enter the eye. Next let's take a look at the details of the retina. Now the key thing about the retina is that it contains light receptors. It contains light receptors. And there are two particular kinds of light re receptor that it has. These both have a slightly different shape. So there's one and there's another. And the type of right light receptor at the top, well these are called rods. These are called rods. And they detect light intensity. In other words, how bright light is. The cones, the other one called cones, now these detect the wavelength of light. And by wavelength we actually mean the color of light. The brain interprets wavelength of light as color. So those are the two types of light receptors we have in the retina. These are both found in the retina. Both rods and cones are found in the retina. In the bottom right hand corner we have the optic nerve and this sends impulses to the brain. It actually sends impulses to a part of the brain in the cerebral hemispheres. You may remember studying that when we looked at the brain. So that's the job of the optic nerve. And then finally we have the ciliary muscles and these are involved in changing the shape of the lens. So the ciliary muscles change the shape of the lens to help focus light rays. And we're going to take a look a little bit more at the job of the lens, the cornea and one or two other parts of the eye. So let's start off by looking at how the eye will focus on a particular object. This is a very simple version of the eye and when we have a near object we have ciliary muscles that make the lens short and thick. So when we do that, we have light rays that come off this near object. They hit the cornea. So the light rays hit the cornea 
and they change direction slightly. We say the cornea refracts light rays. So they're refracted slightly, they change direction, then the light rays hit the lens, and the lens will refract the light rays even more. The light rays will then be focused on the retina. By focus, we mean the light rays will meet on the retina, and then after that, there will be an impulse that's sent along the sensory neurons, which are found in the optic nerve, to the brain. This is what happens when we look at a near object. If the object is further away, in this case is off the side of the screen there, for a distance object, the ciliary muscles make the lens thin and wide. So the light rays are not hitting at such a big angle. They are still refracted slightly by the cornea, but they are refracted a little bit less by the lens because the lens is now a different shape, it's longer and thinner. So the light rays can still focus on the retina at the back and that impulse can then still be sent along the sensory neurons in the optic nerve to the brain. We'll make a summary of this at the end of the video. Let's take a look at the eye and how it adjusts to light intensity. So if we have a scenario where the light is very dim, so in dim light, what happens is muscles in the iris make the pupil dilate. That means to get wider and that allows more light to get into the eye. And there you can see the pupil dilating. If we have a slightly different scenario where there is bright light, in bright light or light that's brighter, for example, if there was a light source, muscles in the iris make the pupil constrict. That means to get narrower, and that will allow less light to enter the eye. Now, this is very useful because not only does it allow the eye to adjust depending on the light conditions, but it also prevents the light from damaging the cells in the retina if the light is too bright. So let's make a quick summary of everything we've talked about so far. So here we have the eye looking at a close object and a distant object. So in the first diagram at the top, if we have a near object, an object that's close to the eye, what happens is the lens becomes shorter and thicker. And this was because of the ciliary muscles contracting, remember. The light rays are refracted more in this scenario, in this case, and so they can focus on the retina at the back. If the object is far or it's a distant object, the lens becomes wider and thinner because of the ciliary muscles, and the light rays are refracted less. They don't need to be refracted as much, so the thinner lens will make them refract less. So that's the details of a near object and a far object and how to focus the light rays onto the retina. Remember, it's the ciliary muscles that are either side of the lens that help to make the lens thicker and thinner. Let's take a look at the scenario when there is bright light and when there is not very much light. In bright light, the muscles in the iris cause the pupil to constrict. That's when the light is bright, and that means the pupil gets smaller which means the amount of light entering the eye is reduced. Less light can enter the eye when the light is very bright. If there is dim light or, is there, or there is some level of darkness, what happens is muscles in the iris cause the pupil to dilate. Muscles cause the pupil to dilate. That means to get wider. And as you can imagine, more light should enter the eye when it's dark. So the light entering the eye increases. The amount of light entering the eye increases when it's dark or there is not very much light to detect. So that's a description of the different parts of the eye and an explanation of how the eye can focus on near objects and far objects and how parts of the eye work together to make those things happen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.